What is up, all uh, Will Feel number one fans and viewers? This is Scott Kusagir, Will Feel number one, and today I'm gonna give you my recap and review of Field Betty and Joan season one, episode four, entitled More or Less. It was directed by Liza Johnson. It was a really, really good episode. Okay, and there's four episodes left after this five, six, seven, and eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's begin. With the recap, shall we? I couldn't have done done it without you. As more or less began, Betty and Joan were learning just how little the pre-release buzz on Baby Jane was doing for their careers. After Betty's baby face new agent suggested that, hey, Jennifer is cheek again, she went so far as to place a tongue-in-cheek cheek situation wanted ad. And when Joan's table full of webs informed her that no offers were coming in, but if any did, they'd be happy to field them. She fired a lot of them as the final cut was completed. Bob irritated Pauline, who still smartly had faith in the picture. By predicting that its upcoming sneak preview screening would be originally more pleasant than a public execution, he even warned Harry that since he bankrolled the flick. They might have they might have to sell the house. What about the kids? We'll sell them too, she suggested. Good naturedly she later Pauline visited not Joan but Mama Sita, white hand lady to the white hand lady, to see if she picture employ a script called The Black Slipper. That the wannabe director had written especially for Crawford. Unfortunately, when the housekeeper brought up the subject of Joan, she first asked who, who Pauline was. You met her over 50 times, Mama Sita. The snap and then scoffed at the notion. A woman directed, it really is over. While Betty was away visiting Margaret, her co-star attended the sneak preview and asked her to be Bob's astonishment. The response was overwhelmingly positive. Before they could say come back, Joan was being applied everywhere she went and that Betty was gamely singing the theme song uh, on the Andy Willems show. I've got a soft spot for losers. Behind closed doors, Joan still wasn't happy. The reviews had been good, but the Times hadn't dug her performance. So she, so she was sure that if anyone from Baby Jane got an Oscar night, it would be Betty. The Academy wouldn't dare nominate her, and not you, too. Hedda insisted that, yes, oh wait, she plays a lunatic. You play cripple. She also refused to even read Pauline's script, informing her that the younger woman that she that wasn't turning her down because of her gender, but because of stage in her career. She wasn't a, she wasn't about to gamble on a nobody. My last chance, Joan said. It's not going to be your first. Meanwhile, Bob balked when John when Jack wanted him to do more movies like Baby Jane. The director yearned to a western and wouldn't accept any project that didn't challenge him. No offense, Jack said, you're, but you're strictly a B-list. So, so he let the director walk certain that he'd come calling back. Though Betty was having a grand time promoting Baby Jane, Joan wouldn't play along. Imagine that Jack was pushing her rival for an Oscar wedding and Crawford stayed home and drank, and drank, and drank. Do you... Do what you want, Warner grumbled, but since Joan had a stake in the movie, when the nominations came out, he still wanted her out there, shaking hands and sucking cock, he said. After catching Betty on the Jack Parr show, joking that Warner had, had the, the old buds couldn't open a movie, Joan phoned her, soused of course and demanded that she stop referring to her as an old bud. Generally feeling bad about the stake Crawford was clearly in, Betty reminded her that half of the movie's success was hers. Then I would appreciate Crawford's spat back if you would enjoy it half as much. It's a new world, Pauline. While Sinatra was make, making Bob's life miserable on the set of his western, Pauline slipped her boss the black slipper, pleaded her case to, her, to direct, and asked if he produced. To her delight, he said yes. Alas, Bob, Bob passed out promises like new dads to do cigars. A point driven home when he visited Betty, who in spite of Baby Jane's success, had been reduced to guest on Perry Mason. They could turn that around, she suggested. 
She had a script in her mind for, her, for him to work in. Only he turned her down. The office didn't come rolling in after the Oscar nominations, he wrote. He'd write her a new hit. This made it especially satisfying to see how Harrison Sinatra treated Bob on the set of the Western. The director had it coming after the way he manipulated Davis and Crawford. Away on the onset strike, Jack called and Bob apologized for the last minute and said that if he, he directed another flick starring Betty, he'd release the Western that Open Ways was mutilating. With no choice, Bob agreed and made the mistake of asking one if he'd had the potential for greatness. Uh, no, Jack didn't think so. Off, off that wound to his pride, Bob was in no mood to be yelled at by Pauline, who discovered that Sinatra's script notes were written on the back of pages from her screenplay. I'm not a male co-worker, he barked at her. You are in fantasy then. If you think you're going to direct so she could keep on being his assistant or, or t- take a hike, Later, Mama Sita encouraged Pauline not to give up, pointing out that status quo women would soon outnumber men, which meant that Hollywood would be obliged by its wallets to stop making movies about woman by woman for woman. Your day is coming, she told Pauline. Finally, as the episode drew to a close, Joan, Joan awakened on an Oscar nomination day to find our phones off the hook. Why? Miss Joan said, Mama Sita, I wanted to sit down. Then from outside the mansion, we heard Crawford's desperate shriek. And I would give this episode four star, five stars, two thumbs up, way up. I'm really enjoying this series. There's four episodes left in it. Really, and Wine Murphy knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, and it's amazing that FX is a cable network and um, they allowed all those efforts. Because on the show um, American Crime Story, the OG Simpsons story, you only allowed one effort, effort in one episode. But this goes beyond it. So it's really good that they were able to sneak out those efforts in. But anyway, comment down below in the comment section. Tell me, Scott Casey, what you thought of Field Betty Season 1, Episode 4. Field Betty and Jones Season 1, Episode 4, and more or less. What do you think is going to happen to four remaining episodes? And you know who to subscribe. You stay classy. Live long and prosper. Peace out.